Okay, so here I wanted to talk a little bit more about the details on the load pull method. So when we do a load pull, what we're really trying to do is present different impedances to the drain of the transistor. So for instance, let's say that we set a load resistance here equal to 50 ohms. We want to find out what the load resistance R sub L prime is after it goes through some variable electric length transmission line. Well, if the transmission line has an impedance of 50 ohms and the load resistance has an impedance of 50 ohms, then it stands to reason that regardless of what the electric length of the transmission line is, the RL prime will be equal to 50 ohms. Mm. So we would measure the output power efficiency and gain. But what if R sub L was equal to something different than 50 ohms? Say it was equal to 60 ohms. We had a means to change the impedance. And we also had a means to sweep the electric length of this transmission line. What would be the value of R sub L prime if we had an impedance of 60 ohms and we were to be able to sweep the transmission line well, you'd find that there'd be some locus. And if we were sweeping it in finite steps of the length of the electric line, we would have different values of impedance. Now, as we were to sweep this R sub L prime around this circle, we would find that there would be different values of efficiency at every point that we measure, for instance. Similarly, we could also measure the output power and we'd find that at each point the different uh, impedances would yield different output powers and also different gains. So at each point we want to monitor the output power efficiency and gain. Now you might imagine if we were to increase the impedance that we were trying to drive to say 70 ohms, and we were to sweep the electric length of the transmission line, we would just go through a bigger circle of points. And we could similarly monitor output power efficiency gain at each of these points. So as we went through these new impedance points, we would want to constantly monitor output power efficiency and gain. And we would build up a data set that would tell us what the efficiency, alpha power, and gain was for each value of R sub L prime that we presented to the transistor. Now from this data set, we would map the output power, efficiency, and gain for every value of R sub L prime, and we could find contours of constant output power, efficiency, and gain. So let's look at the concept for efficiency. So for instance, we might find that a given R sub L prime yields in a maximum efficiency of 60%. We might find then that a certain set of impedances would yield a constant efficiency that wasn't quite at the maximum value, but would yield an efficiency of say 55%. And then if we change the impedance a little bit more, we might find another contour that would yield an efficiency of say 50%. And finally, another contour that would yield an efficiency of say 45%. And we could keep doing this for different impedances across the chart. Now, one thing to note is that we can form similar contour plots for both output power and gain. And the real benefit of this analysis is that we can quickly see trade-offs in output power efficiency and gain for different load impedances. Now, it's nice to know that the requirements for our different designs dictate the trade-offs that we would make in terms of the load impedance that we use. So for instance, some designs might dictate that we need an absolute value of output power. And some designs might say that we can sacrifice a bit of output power to be more efficient. And this is just going to depend upon the requirements of the given project we're working on. Okay, so that will conclude this lecture. And in the next lecture, we'll start to talk about 
how to try and improve efficiency using different bias points in our amplifiers.